10 three-pointers per game, and they're led by the leading scorer in the conference, Ashley Jones. All Big 12, first team for the second straight year, number one in the conference, number eight in the nation in scoring, dynamic, creative, hard to guard. She leads the way. Iowa State starts three freshmen to go along with her. And it's the contrast against Charlie Collier, who leads inside. She is the third leading scorer, Charlie Collier, in the conference, second leading rebounder, and she has dominated in the two matchups against Iowa State this year. Has already declared she's leaving to the WNBA after this her junior year. It's a real contrast in styles today between these two teams. You said it, Texas won them both this season. Coming into this year, Iowa State was the only team Texas didn't have a winning record against all time. But the Longhorns have even the series at 21 apiece. And this one to continue in the Big 12 tournament. Their first games, a miss from Collier, which is a good sign for Iowa State because she really dominated in that game in Ames, especially early. Well, they brought the double team quickly, made her shoot up over the top. A travel on Lexi Donarski. Donarski was named, unanimously named, the freshman of the year in the Big 12, but I don't care how seasoned you are as a freshman, the three freshmen starting for Iowa State with an opportunity to play in their first postseason championship, there's gonna be some nerves. Celeste Taylor's mid-range jumper rims out, rebound Ashley Jones. And you saw two players, Kristen Scott and Ashley Jones, were blocking out Charlie Collier. The All-American inside gets her own rebound and mm. gets it with a left hand. There's the creativity. A, a lot of players would have just forced it up with that right hand. She took her time, looked where the defenders were, and went to her left hand. Texas looking for their first bucket. Joanne Allen Taylor has played really good in both games against Iowa State, 16 apiece. Her first three on the way, and it falls. And Texas has the ability to hit threes as well. They have in their matchups against Iowa State. You want to be careful not to get into a three-point shooting contest with Iowa State, but when it's there, you got to take advantage. Corner three, Iowa State looking for an answer, rimmed out. Ashley Jones, another offensive rebound, mm. reverse layup. Rims out. Ashley Jones only six feet tall. She will continue to battle inside, though. Collier for three. Hit one in the first half in Ames, and she gets another one right here. Showing her range and getting away from the double team that she faces inside, says, I'm going to step out and show you I've got some range. Jones all the way. Taylor hits the deck, and it falls. Vic Schaefer wanted an offensive foul. Vic Schaefer coaches up his teams to take charges, and Celeste Taylor was in good position, but Ashley Jones able to maintain her position and still score. There's the double team once again. Celeste Taylor from the right wing hits the three. That's a good sign. She's been struggling lately, just seven and a half points per game on 26% from the field in her last four. Yeah, it's a big, a good sign for Texas overall. They've already hit three for three three-pointers from three different players. Kristen Scott answers. All right, here we go. It's 10.30 in the morning, but everybody's up and ready. It's got a big piece of this Iowa State attack, especially against teams like Texas. Joanne Allen Taylor, second three, miss. Rebound, nicely done by Fuhrbach. Good blocking out in the early going for Iowa State. That will be an absolute key for them in this game. Fuhrbach and Emily Ryan gave way to the seniors in the last two games. As Ashley Jones is fouled inside, hits the ground hard, but pops up. And what a matchup. You've got two of the top three scorers in the Big 12 going against one another. Collier defending Jones on the block. There was a little pushing before Jones got the basketball, but they didn't call it. Jones is so good at drawing contact and getting to the free throw line. They get an early foul on Collier. Jones misses the first one, a rare miss. She's a 90% free throw shooter. There's your two stars right there. Jones one for two, the junior from Iowa City, 23 and a half points per game, nine rebounds, 27 steals, all lead Iowa State. 
And how about that? Iowa State picking up in some full court pressure, trying to press the pressing team. Bill Finley said he might pull that out. Call your offensive rebound and the putback. The first offensive rebound for Texas. And it's Charlie Collier, and she's able to score. That's a huge concern. She had 19 rebounds when these two played in Ames, and I thought that was the best game of the year for Texas was their win at Iowa State. Jones, wild shot, short. Here comes Taylor, long pass to Joanne Allen Taylor. Iowa State's been in a 2-3 zone that's modified to stick around Charlie Collier as much as possible. Celeste Taylor gets her own rebound and gets the foul. Some energy for Vic Schaefer's point guard, who's in his first season at Texas, 17 and eight entering the tournament. Two-time NCAA runner-up at Mississippi State where he spent eight years. He won two National Coach of the Year awards, and he has a chance to take over a Texas program, he has been good, but he wants to take him to the next level. To the elite level, and you know, some uh, some fun history. Of course, Vic Schaefer was an assistant coach at Texas A&M for Gary Blair for a lot of years, so the last time he was here in Municipal Auditorium was at the Big 12 Championship, and in 2011, A&M did not win the Big 12 title, but they went on to win the national tournament that year. And when I asked Vic Schaefer if he had any good memories when he came in here, he just, he said, it looks a little bit different. It looks a little fresher and newer. Iowa State getting creative on the inbound. We saw that in the shoot around. Bill Finley trying anything he can to deal with this Texas pressure, which is an issue. They lead the conference in turnovers force per game and turnover margin, and both of those numbers are top 30 in the country. And that's what Vic Schaefer's teams are known for, and that's what Bill Finley prepared his team for. He knows they have to take better care of the basketball. Again, those three freshman starters, it's tough, but remember when they went into Waco and beat Baylor earlier this year? Those freshmen didn't look like freshmen. They had such poise and composure, and that's what you see here on the drive. The nice screen up top, the drive to the basket. Emily Ryan didn't lose a game in her high school career and has had to learn with, to deal with adversity and disappointment in her college time, but she is a winner, and that's a big time play for the freshman here early. Stamir 104 wins and zero losses in her high school career at Central Plains. Three state titles, of course the fourth one probably would have won that too, but COVID eliminated that opportunity. Celeste Taylor block shot from Ryan. And just to put a bow on that with Emily Ryan, you've mentioned the high school, it's in Claflin, Kansas which might sound familiar to women's basketball fans, the home of Jackie Styles. Jackie Styles' dad coached Emily Ross. And a terrific pass inside when Iowa State can spread the court and move the basketball against this pressure defense of Texas. They have the opportunity to break things down and get good shots. Open three, no good. And a rebound secured by Morgan Kane and Ashley Jones. Celeste Taylor falls to the ground. Jones finishes. Celeste Taylor has tried that a couple of times. And a lot of a lot of teams are going to try to draw offensive fouls on Jones. But I, I think one-on-one, -on -one, that's going to be difficult to get. It's all going to be when you bring the help and she spins and turns and runs into somebody that you might be able to pick up an offensive foul. Extra pass from Lambert to Allen Taylor. Rebound Kane. Kane is in there for rebounding. You saw Kristen Scott just have a, a rebound ripped away earlier, so Kane's in there for some rebounding. They're swinging all the way around. Corner three for Madison Wise, rims out. And a couple bodies collide, Taylor and Jones. Here come the Longhorns. Well, that's the shot you want if you're Iowa State. The kick out from Jones, the ball reversal. Got to hit those shots when you have the opportunity. Taylor trying to go baseline, cut off, nice defense from Wise. So Texas started three for three from beyond the arc and have missed their last three. So they're gonna go inside to Collier for the high percentage shot. 
Collier has seven as Texas ties things up. Emily Ryan behind the back, gets into the paint. Up strong, Emily Ryan, the freshman, coast to coast. What a great feel by Emily Ryan. She is being hassled the entire way by Chevalier, but she realizes she's not being stopped. So she keeps the dribble going all the way to the rim. Ryan has an early five for Iowa State. 14 of the 17 from Ryan and Jones into Collier. Tough matchup for Kane, too strong. Taylor, another offensive rebound. Lambert lines one up and hits. So two or three players trying to block out Charlie Collier, and what happens? Celeste Taylor gets the offensive rebound and kicks it out for the three. Jones back to work. And block shot from Celeste Taylor. That'll take us to our first media timeout, seven and a half minutes in. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball, and GEICO. You can save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Iowa State comes out in a zone defense to protect the paint. What does Texas do? Well, they just fire in some three-pointers. Charlie Collier knocks down the first one. Celeste Taylor hits one from the right wing. And then Taylor later able to get an offensive rebound and kick it out to Kyra Lambert. And so far, Texas four for seven from beyond the arc to complement what Collier is doing inside the paint and boy we've got a good one to start things off here in the Big 12 championship quarterfinals. Lambert already has three assists, two assists for Celeste Taylor. You saw right there Collier hitting the three Brenda and I, I have to think that's part of why she's projected to be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. She can do everything. She shot 32% from three this year. Yeah, it's her versatility. She is long and strong and creative with her shots, a terrific rebounder, but she has the ability to stretch out and play the face-up game, which will serve her well in the WNBA. So many white jerseys around Charlie Collier. Celeste Taylor gets called for a foul. She didn't like it. She might have had a case right there. That's her second. Well, she has been active and has secured a couple of offensive rebounds early to set up shots, and that's a, a big problem for Texas. Vic Schaefer rolling the dice and deciding to leave Taylor on the floor with those two fouls here in the first quarter. She does have to be careful, and she knows it as Wise was driving, kicks out. Ray Johnson's first shot misses. Rebound Chevalier. Ashley Jones not on the floor right now for Iowa State. A lot of pressure being applied by Texas on that end of the court. Joanne Allen Taylor pulls up. Call your offensive rebound. Goes right back to it. Touch shot, no good. Rebound goes to Fuhrbach. Skips it across to Johnson. Look at the length of Charlie Collier. Tristan Scott is a good three-point shooter. Charlie Collier's not that close, but with that long reach, Scott didn't take the shot. Tries to feed it inside. Too wide, though, for Madison Wise. And a turnover on Iowa State. Their second. So some subs coming in. Ryan coming back to the court. Kane coming back to the court for Iowa State. You know, you have to coach in the Big 12 championship as if you're going to play three games in three days. And Iowa State wants to give itself the best chance to win today, but they also want to make sure that they're using their depth so they have the opportunity to play on should they get this win today. Could potentially play three games in three days ahead of the NCAA tournament. Two bigs in right now for Texas with Ebo inside and Collier outside. Here come the Cyclones down one. Ryan behind the back. Wise for three. Offensive rebound fell right to Kane. There was just no Texas bodies anywhere to be found. Well, she was out setting the screen, and so they were helping with the shooter, and Kane just slid right to the basket. Nobody there to check her. 
We have had three spectacular games to start this tournament in Kansas City. I think everybody's just so excited that we're playing yeah. the Big 12 championship this year. Eight seconds left in the first quarter. Lambert steps back, really forced one up on the side of the backboard, and Kane hands it off, but too late, as Iowa State holds a one-point lead after one quarter in Kansas City. The 4-5 matchup, the Cyclones and the Longhorns. As soon as the 64 team field is announced Monday at 8 Eastern, sign up to play Women's Tournament Challenge on ESPN.com. Fill out your bracket for a chance to win $10,000 in Amazon gift cards. Go to ESPN.com forward slash TC Women. These two teams both locks to go to the NCAA tournament, but down in the six to eight seed range, which mm. is isn't going to make them happy because their road gets harder, but also those top seeds, they're going to see teams like Iowa State, Texas, Oklahoma State in the lower seeded positions aren't going to be too happy if they get drawn into their side. Both these teams bring very different strengths, but pose a lot of problems for opponents. Two of five Big 12 teams in the top 30 in the net rankings, and yet only two teams are ranked, with Baylor at number six and West Virginia also in the top 20. Chevalier with a lot of pressure on the basketball just made it impossible for Iowa State to get into offense that time. Kane with Collier behind her ended up shuffling her feet before she made the move, but that was all the pressure of Chevalier out top. Skips it across, Chevalier couldn't hit the three in the corner. Rebound Morgan Kane, who's been a nice spark early off the bench. Yeah, and she only plays about seven minutes a game typically but with her size at 6'3", she is the, the big in the lineup that can provide some rebounding for Iowa State. Another turnover. Bill Fenley frustrated on that sideline. Yeah, he, he used one of his classic lines yesterday in practice. He said, shoot the ball before you turn it over. He said, passes against Texas are just opportunities to turn it over. Shoot the ball. It's a player's dream, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, right? Chevalier steps into one. Free throw line jumper connects. And again, as soon as the shot is made, Texas turns around, faces up, and guards hard 94 feet. And Alan Taylor draws Jones. A little double team here from Chevalier. Extra pass. Kane lays it up on the feed from the freshman, Emily Ryan. And Emily Ryan got, had a big Ebo coming at her and saw Kane had sealed Collier down low. Such a beautiful pass. Emily Ryan in her freshman season has not had less than two assists in a game all year long. 21 of their 25 games, she's had four or more. Offensive rebound. Goes to Ebo, and then another miss. Jones has herself another board. Jones goes inside, doubled, and swatted away. I think it was Lambert that got a piece of it. Yeah, Lambert came and brought the double where Ebo needed help. Chevalier wanted another mid-range jumper. Jones has her seventh rebound. Kane has five to pair with the superstar for Iowa State. Goes to Kane. Pump fake, driving on Ebo, some oh. contact, and rebound Collier. Mm, that was a great move by Kane. Really put Collier in a compromising situation. Collier probably lucky she didn't pick up the foul there. She's sitting on one foul right now. So another one would most likely send her to the bench for the remainder of the first half. Chevalier banks it in. Chevalier not being guarded closely by Iowa State, and she has taken advantage of her opportunities. Ryan almost lost it in the lane. Backdoor feed wise, reverse layup. Texas feeds you up with their defense, but if you can get the backdoor cut and make a precise pass like that in traffic, you're going to be able to break it down, but that takes a perfect pass, and that's what we just saw. First basket for Wise, third assist for Emily Ryan. Chevalier, comfortable right now, just wants to get to that spot about 12 to 15 feet away. 
Collier, contested three. Too strong, rebound Ryan. They're running, has Dinarski ahead. See Dinarski looking for her first bucket. The freshman can't get the roll. Kane fighting for it. The Longhorns have it. Kane has to hustle back. Texas is doing what they want to do in forcing Iowa State off the three-point line. Iowa State's only made one of five three-pointers. They've had to go to the rim where all that traffic is. That's what Texas wants to do. And the Collier who thought she was tangled up with Kane but stays with Texas. Emily Ryan, the freshman point guard, with this terrific pass earlier. Watch, she draws that middle defender. Kane is sealed on the inside, delivers a great pass, and then watch this backdoor cut by Maddie Wise and the perfect delivery there. It takes perfect passes against this pressure defense from Texas, and we've seen it in the early going for Iowa State. Everyone's dealt with a lot of the same things this year. It's been challenging in so many ways. But I look at a team like Iowa State, Brenda, who is young and extremely talented and think a full season, an off season, and a normal regular season, and this team could be really special. Cyclones lead by one. Ray Johnson with it. Low pass to Kristen Scott. Her and oh. Collier tied up on the ground. Joint possession arrow with Texas. Charlie Collier playing with a little fire right now. She's had a couple of plays where the officials could have blown the whistle. She's using her a uh, little of her star status card right now, which I think is okay. Uh, I think the star should be allowed a little bit of leeway, but she's uh, she's pushed it a little bit on a couple of plays lately. Collier doubled and really forced that up, and Jones has her eighth rebound of the game. That pass from Jones looking for Donarski and slapped away by Celeste Taylor. Yeah, very dangerous. But an opportunity here for Iowa State. Bill Finley always talks about those special plays. You, know, you have offense and defense, and then you have your special teams, like in football, or special plays. That, those are these inbounds plays, an opportunity for a creative play to get an open shot. Johnson inbounding. And then a foul away from the ball. This is on Celeste oh, Taylor Days. Yeah. That's her third. And that is huge. Vic Schaefer was talking his team That's through really it. You could hear him calling out the play this ahead of time. And Taylor ran over the screener. And Vic Schaefer looks like he's made the decision today. He's just going to leave Celeste Taylor in no matter how many fouls she has. She has to be really careful now. Guarding wise tightly, Johnson helps. Just watch all over the court how closely Texas guards the ball, how they deny the passing lanes. Wise, long stride through and finishes with a left hand. But Bill Fenley called the play from the sideline. He knows Celeste Taylor has three fouls. If Iowa State can get Celeste Taylor out of the game, they have a much better shot of winning this game. Texas, two of their last 15 from the field. Loose ball, Donarski tied up with Shea Holly, and it's Iowa State's ball when we return. Iowa State out on top by three. Madison Wise taking matters into her own hand, taking it right at Celeste Taylor inside. We've got a good one here in Kansas City. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. 66 Big 12 Women's Basketball Championship Municipal Auditorium. So much history in this building, and we have started to write our own little chapter here in year 25. And what a start to this tournament with these three games. This one certainly not the exception. Didn't have our first media timeout until the under three mark in the first <laughs> quarter because nobody would really do anything wrong. There's the trophy. What, what a presentation down there, too. And every time a team wins, they go over, grab theirs, move it on. I love that. The winner of this game plays the winner of Baylor and TCU tomorrow in the semifinals.
So you see the pressure of Texas caused Iowa State to try something a little creative out of the timeout. They tried the home run ball over the top and it went a little too far. So Texas going to get it right back. It's such a chess match between Bill Finley and Vic Schaefer here utilizing the strengths of both of their teams. Iowa State has done a good job of keeping it away from Collier inside. They've always got somebody in front and behind her in this 2-3 zone. They're giving up some outside shots, but Texas hasn't hit a three for a while, but now they do. There you go. And Bill Finley will typically play the percentages. He wants to cover up inside and not allow the pass to Collier and will give up a few of those shots, but you have to be careful not to allow Texas to get hot out there. We talked Joanne Allen Taylor into hitting that three. Minarski, another roll inside. A couple tough baskets for her underneath. And again, the, the points in the paint, Iowa State 22 of their 27 points are in the paint. We started talking about the contrasting strengths of these teams. It's in the paint for Texas. It's the three-point line for Iowa State. Well, both coaches have taken away those strengths for the other team, and they're getting their scoring from the area that's not their strength. Offensive rebound, Lambert, and a correction. That was Donarski's first basket. Emily Ryan has been doing the work inside for Iowa State as Collier has an offensive rebound. Three people around her, terrific pass out of the triple team. And what a finish by Kyra Lambert, the grad transfer from Duke. That's what you have to do when your big is being double or triple team, dive to the block, somebody is open, and be that target for your big to be able to deliver the pass. Lambert has five points, five assists for the Longhorns. Kristen Scott over the top of Collier. Collier calling for it. Too much traffic around her. Collier fires from mid-range. Has to be a little frustrating for her right now because there really are three white jerseys at all times. It's just hard for her to find space. Lambert cutting inside, a foul called. I think they'll get Emily Ryan. We've seen all the That's presence the around as Collier gets that. Let's just watch how it plays out. Freeze it right there. Look at triple team, three around. So somebody's going to be open. The dive to the rim, and Collier finds a way to get it out of traffic to score. What an ac acrobatic shot by Lambert to score it. That's good strength and awareness by Collier to deliver that pass. That's not easy to do. Chevalier, Joanne Allen Taylor. In the corner, Shea Holly from three. Offensive rebound, looked like a pass almost, but Lambert missed the layup. Holly getting some playing time. She kept the ball alive on that last offensive rebound to get an extra opportunity. Jones inside, and offensive foul called on Ashley Jones. I mentioned earlier, it's hard to get an offensive foul on Jones by your primary defender. It has to be that help defender because she, she makes that secondary move. Watch as she spins here. And it's Chevalier stepping outside of the arc to draw that. Boy, that's tough for Jones. She looks like she's going around it, and there's a little lean by the defender. But Jones picks up the offensive foul there. I think that's a tough call on Jones. Now, Big Schaefer did take Celeste Taylor out of the game with those three fouls. Joanne Allen Taylor. Another one for three. Her third triple in five attempts. She sees the opportunity. And she has taken advantage. Ninth lead change in this game as Texas holds a three-point lead. Donarski thought about going inside. Skips it across. That's a wild pass. Lambert picks it off. Lambert working on Donarski who blocks it, but a finish from Joanne Allen Taylor on the follow. And that's why you run the court. No layup is a sure thing. You get down there and help your teammate. Great extra effort on the offensive rebound and put back because Lexi Donarski knew she threw a bad pass. So she hustled back 
and she was able to get a hand on the basketball. But the good hustle play behind to score on the putback, that's why you never assume the basket is going to be made. Largest lead of the game for Texas. The pressure getting cranked up. Chevalier saves it. Here comes Collier. The defender was chasing Texas in their offensive set. Chevalier reminds me of Brooke McCarty, the great guard for Texas a few years ago that put such pressure on the ball, was one of the top players in the conference, and she brings that kind of energy defensively. Lambert, rhythm jumper off. Holly stepped on the line. It belongs to Iowa State. Coming up on the Audi Halftime Report, Kelsey Riggs, Rebecca Lobo, Andy Landers, some champ week updates around conference tournaments as we get set for a busy weekend across college basketball. Into Kane, a really tough spot to catch it there on the sideline. I know that group has a lot of fun in the studio. I'm interested to hear their analysis of this great matchup here in our first quarter final. Tenarski working on Lambert. Iowa State wants the last shot. Narski in the lane, ripped away, Chevalier, three seconds. Looks up, Collier has to get it up and falls off the rim. Texas leads by five, and believe it or not, that's our largest halftime margin in the first three games of the Big 12 championship from Kansas City. It has been nothing but great basketball so far. We'll take a break, the Audi halftime report Coming up, the Longhorns, the five seed, up by five at halftime over Iowa State. That trophy on the line. Texas leads Iowa State by five here at the beginning of the third quarter. The Iowa State faithful are here. They always travel well. And a future Longhorn watching on as well as we begin the third quarter. And Brenda, it's Another one of those games we really thought would be close. It has been, and the question is, can the Cyclones find a way against Texas? And they haven't been able to all year. That's a big reason why Collier gets the first bucket. The double team didn't come quickly enough, and that extends the run for Texas to a 9-0 run right now. And Iowa State, Bill Finley was concerned about turnovers. They had 10 turnovers in the first half. Texas has scored 10 points on those. 10 to 1 in that turnover category as Donarski finishes over the defender for her second bucket. Kyra Lambert had a really nice first half. Six assists for the Longhorns. Lambert also hit a three, which marks her sixth straight game with at least one from long range. With ball moving around the Top, yeah. Around the perimeter, and Alan Taylor rips another three. That's her fourth one of the game. She has been ready when the ball has been reversed. She just needs a little bit of space. She has shot with a lot of confidence today. 16 in the first two meetings with the Cyclones. 14 already in this one. Zanarski trying to force it to Jones, and they get a foul on Jones cutting down the baseline. Yeah, I, think, I think they just called it off Texas. Oh, you're right. It, it looked like the foul was going to be called. <laughs> Ashley Jones has been well defended. Everybody has been denied on the perimeter. It's a lot of that, a lot of one-on-one -on -one creating shots by Iowa State. That's allowed them to hang in. Madison Wise picks up her third field goal. Back and forth here early in the second half. Joanne Allen Taylor, another three. Rebound, Chevalier. Celeste Taylor, remember, she has three fouls. Allen Taylor, physical move to the rim. She has 16. She has taken it on her shoulders to be aggressive when the three point shot is there. When it's not, she puts the ball on the floor and attacks. She is haunted. Iowa State this season. It looks like she'll top that 16 the way she's playing. Ryan trying to drive on Lambert. 
Big jump through and a finish from the freshman. Crafty move. So we saw Iowa State using the backdoor cut and precise passing in the first half. We've seen some one-on-one -on -one against the cl uh, close physical defense here in the second half. Now they've got to find a way, Iowa State, to get some defensive stops here. Trouble getting it into Collier. Air ball from Celeste Taylor. Here comes Ashley Jones. Spinning. Jones goes back. Contact. Finish. Count the bucket. They call a blocking foul on Joanne Allen Taylor. Joanne Allen Taylor has been doing the work on the offensive end for Texas. The three pointer, the drive to the basket. She is a mechanical engineering major who wants to design cars someday. Well, she tried to get a defensive position there and draw an offensive foul from Jones, but got it. A little shot to the face, and she is going to have to take a moment out. She's bleeding, but you saw her move her feet. Ashley Jones is so good at reading the defense, and that's what she did in the offseason. She looked at how teams were defending her and she and her dad studied that together to know what counter move she needed to come up with. So here's Jones, and she rips through and steps through to draw that foul. Alan Taylor, just too much body contact there on the move, and it looked like just a, a little bit of Jones went across the face, and we'll see if uh, Alan Taylor is able to stay in the game. I think the officials may look and just double check to see if there was any excessive or unnecessary activity by Ashley Jones, but it, it looked to me as if she is just making her move. She just rotates through, and well, I, I barely even see the contact there. It was that right elbow, and it grazed the chin of Joanne Allen Taylor. I don't think they're gonna upgrade this to anything, but. That's her sister. Looking on Aubrey Jones in the last game against Texas. She came in when Ashley was in foul trouble and made a couple of key three pointers. The Jones sisters, two of five very talented basketball players in that family. Lisa Jones, Bill Lawrence, Eric Bruton gathering around to just determine should that be upgraded to an intentional foul, even though the foul was called on Allen Taylor. It's hard to see from that angle because Allen Taylor's arm is blocking it, but it's just a little bit of a clip of the right elbow on Ashley Jones, of Ashley Jones. And if you're the offensive player, you have to be given the space to, to pivot and make your move. I, I don't think Jones leaned. I don't think she, she led with the elbow. I, I don't... I don't think they're going to see anything extra here, but there have been a few times this year where those kind of rip-through moves have been called. So I'm interested to hear as both coaches are being summoned in by Lisa Jones as far as what they are going to call in this situation. And this is one of the times when if we were down on the floor, I know the officials would come over and explain it to us, but we are uh, well up above, and we're just going to have to rely on what we're hearing on the sideline. Stays is just a regular foul on Allen Taylor, which you couldn't have changed anyway. It was just if there was something on Ashley Jones for the elbow, which there is not. Bill Finley saying, let's go. Vic Schaefer's getting a little extra time with Lisa Jones on the sideline, and they're not giving the ball to Ashley Jones. They finally do for the free throw. Bill Finley was like, let's go. Finishes the three-point play, and we have a three-point game in Kansas City. 6.45 to play in the third quarter. Quick swing, Chevalier trying to feed it inside. Lambert extra pass, and... Joanne Allen Taylor missed. Jones corrals the rebound. Nice block out by Jones. Double double for Ashley Jones already. Here's a setup of the same exact play that Allen Taylor fouled on the last time, and it's the same move. 
by Ashley Jones. Set her up to the middle, drop step to the baseline. It worked last time, she did it again as Alan Taylor just giving her all sorts of pressure. But Jones going away from the pressure uses that nice reach to go out around. And so good at, at drawing the foul and getting to the free throw line and has got Iowa State back to a tie ball game. An 8-0 run for the Cyclones over the last minute. Two straight fouls on Allen Taylor. She only has two. The momentum for Iowa State. And they cannot get the ball to Charlie Collier right now. They go into her, poked away by Kane. They get a foul on Morgan Kane, reaching around. Morgan Kane behind Collier. They give a little cushion. You can see the, the in and out of the guards as they try to put a lot of bodies around Collier to not make it easy to go inside. It's one of the guards dropping in front of her depending on where the ball is moved. Oh, you're working again. Four to shoot, Joanne Allen Taylor hands it off. Nice move, Celeste Taylor with the layup. Kane goes to the floor. Oh, they're gonna call that on Kane. She was on the floor, and when she was getting up, Collier tried to step over her, and Kane tried to get up, and Kane's going to get the foul there. There might have been a little extra going on before that that led to that, so watch. Okay, look, first of all, Collier wraps her arm around and throws Kane to the ground, and as Collier's stepping over her, Kane raises up, so they're gonna call the foul on Kane, but there was some activity ahead of that by Collier that the officials missed. And it's, uh, that's an interesting call, and Morgan Kane was visibly frustrated, and rightfully so. And so, Kane is on the ground and Collier chooses to step over her. As Kane is getting up, she gets called for the foul. And I'm surprised they didn't look at that in the monitor, yeah. especially there given the fact they gave on. so much attention to what happened at the other end. I agree. This game's heating up. Furbach kicks it out. Donarski for three, lights it up. And the Iowa State faithful love that. Only the second three-pointer of the game for Iowa State, and it was Fierbach breaking down the defense with the dribble and then having the patience to find the open shooter. Texas looking for an answer. Into Collier, here we go, quick turn, gets the roll, and she's fired up. Strong move. The double team didn't come quickly enough, and Collier just goes up over Kane. Oh, that's a travel. They did get the late whistle on Jones traveling, and this thing just keeps getting better and better. A one-point game in Kansas City. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Exclusive live announcement of the 64 team NCAA Women's Championship field this year. We'll break down every team and every matchup in each region. 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app and a bonus hour of coverage at 8 o'clock on ESPNU. We cannot wait for that one and to see where these two teams wind up. And if you think that they're ready to go to the NCAA tournament, well, they probably are, but they're not done just yet because this game clearly means something. This means a lot. Everybody wants to play their best in March, and both teams battling it out. It's getting a little emotional out there, as we've seen. Celeste Taylor left wide open for three, short. Ray Johnson tipped it, call your rebounds. Iowa State forcing the shot that they want Texas to take, but can't corral the rebound. All the way back to Taylor, goes baseline on Jones. Kicks it, Joanne Allen Taylor lost the handle. Lambert, deep three, splash! Texas with eight three-pointers now in the game, the most 
that they've had in a Big 12 game this year is nine. They have taken advantage of their open shots when they get them against the Iowa State defense that's so concerned about Collier as it should be inside. A defense there by Alan Taylor. Kristen Scott, haven't seen much of her today. Well, they've used Morgan Kane a lot for defense against Collier, but they need Scott's production. Really good look from Scott. Ray Johnson couldn't finish the layup, frustrated with herself. Ray Johnson has been a good mentor to the freshman guards on this team, but they needed that shot. Collier again, deep in the post. In and around and above three defenders. Timeout, Bill Fenley. Trying to get his team fired up. 3.07 to play in the third quarter. Texas by six. Charlie Collier continues to battle and fight and go up through triple teams. The last time she got it, she turns. She goes over three defenders to score to give Texas the six-point lead. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. Softball and baseball seasons. Heating up right now, more than 200 matchups available along with the early rounds of both conference tournaments, plus the home for over 500 live events and original content. If you're a Big 12 fan, you gotta have it. Sign up at ESPNplus.com forward slash Big 12 now. Charlie Collier announced she would go to the WNBA draft at the conclusion of this season, but Brenda, we are seen. She has not thrown in the towel just yet. Gonna give everything she has for the Longhorns down the stretch. When she knows she's being watched, I know there are WNBA scouts here in attendance here in Municipal Auditorium, and she's shown she can stretch the defense, and she can be tough inside, even when she's going against three defenders. Chasing Scott, who missed, nice contest, the first of four games today from Kansas City. The first three have not disappointed in our tournament. The two last night coming down to the wire. One more on ESPNU, TCU, Baylor follows us. And then the late games on ESPN Plus this evening. The inside and outside combination for Texas have been effective. Iowa State's kept the ball from Collier at times, and that's when Texas has done that. They've now hit nine three-pointers to complement what Collier does inside. When they do that, they are one of the toughest teams in the country to try to play against. You combine their tough, physical, hard-nosed defense that Vic Schaefer wants his team to play, and you have the threat of Collier inside, and then the three-point shooting consistency for Texas. That is a lethal combination. 10-0 run over two minutes and 45 seconds for Texas and saved by Ryan, but she stepped on the line. Another turnover, the 13th for the Cyclones to just one for the Longhorns. Yeah, Iowa State isn't a team that creates a lot of turnovers, but they can't turn the ball over and lose those opportunities. And it's, it just takes away opportunities for shots at the basket. You said it earlier, but I can hear Bill Fenley saying, <laughs> shoot the ball. Every pass is a chance to turn it over. It's so hard against the pressure defense of Texas. They want to wear you down and take away your will. Joanne Allen Taylor, five to shoot. Lambert into Collier. Double team, just throws it at the hoop off the rim. and. Belongs to Iowa State as it goes out of bounds. Well, she had to take that shot. The shot clock was winding down, and Iowa State played as well defensively that entire possession as you can. Minute 20 here, and Iowa State down nine. It just feels like, Brenda, they need something in the final minute of this quarter. Jones misses. And Jones got caught in that tough space where it's hard to use the backboard there, but she needed to. And just a rare miss as she drives to the basket. Collier and Kane getting tangled up inside. Now to Collier, and she wants it. Big step through, and a rebound belongs to Emily Ryan, who is underneath her own teammate. She got tangled up. 
pretty badly. Ouch. That could not have felt good. I hope she's okay. That looks like when you and I did the TCU West Virginia game and Madison Smith went to the ground. And we'll just watch the tumble. And that is a situation where there could possibly be an injury. And it is really good to see Emily Ryan get up. Bounce pass it in as Ryan stays in the game. Iowa State find a turning point. It's Ryan for three, why not? Big shot. You cannot leave Iowa State players open from three-point range. You just can't. That's their DNA. They are built to shoot and make three-pointers. You can't give them an opening, and that's the way they can get back in this ball game. Texas looking to answer to end the third quarter. Skips it across, five seconds to shoot. Joanne Allen Taylor inside, too strong. Collier's put back, misses. Texas by six. Charlie Collier can't believe she didn't tip that one in. And the door is open for Iowa State to get back in. Lexi Donarski, no help from Collier on the ball screen and she drains it. Iowa State keeping it close as we go to the fourth. In the Big 12, we are playing for more than just a conference championship. We're playing for the power change has when basketball is our voice. United, we ball. We've seen this message echoed throughout all Big 12 arenas and across college basketball this entire year. Unity, standing up against racism, any sort of discrimination. Moment of silence played before every game here at the Big 12 tournament so far. A lot of these teams have come up with their own ways to fight this injustice in their own communities. Yeah, and I, I love the opportunity that everybody has on, on the floor, in the stands, when there have been fans in attendance to take that moment of silence before the game, to really reflect and think how each one of us individually can make a change. Iowa State in transition. Will they live to regret a couple missed layups here in the second half? You have, when you have opportunities, you have to take advantage of them. Chevalier. Celeste Taylor finds an opening on the wing and miss. Poked by Collier. Chevalier comes in and cleans it up. You spend so much attention to try to keep Collier off the boards that activity by another player like that can set up that second chance opportunity. Collier finishes over Kristen Scott. 15 offensive rebounds for Texas. And they've converted 18 second chance points off those turnovers. Ryan back to Scott, sets, fires, Kristen Scott for three. I mentioned Iowa State really needs Kristen Scott's contributions, her productivity. She is such a versatile scorer. Charlie Collier has had a hand in her face every time she's been on the perimeter. That was a very quick, tough shot, and she delivered. Scott's at 11 of 21 from three entering this game. That's a turnover on Texas. And a rare turnover, an unforced turnover. That, that's just the third turnover of the game for Texas. Dick Schaefer back here as the head coach of Texas. Last time he was at Municipal Auditorium as an assistant at Texas A&M. They won the Big 12 tournament title here in, in uh, Kansas City in 2010. They also won it in 2008. And on to win a national title in 2011 as the associate head coach at Texas A&M. There is another backdoor pass to set up Scott. And Scott, that time, she, she is, does not have the physical size and strength that Charlie Collier does, but she used her body well that time. She pinned Collier behind and kept the ball out front to have a chance at the shot, and she drew the foul. That's two on Collier as Kristen Scott makes it a four-point game. 
Scott has eight. All Big 12 second team, Kristen Scott, this year and her sophomore year. She was honorable mention last year. She has been a solid contributor throughout her career despite battling a lot of injuries. Collier is so tough to handle inside. And she just has that strength and size to power up over Scott. And even when she touches the ball, that's going to be a problem for Iowa State. They have to not let her touch the ball. Kristen Scott gets one back for Iowa State. Two-point game. So you trade threes for twos. Kristen Scott's in there for her productivity. She hits the three. Collier hits the two. Kristen Scott hits the three. That's how Iowa State gets back in the game. This is what we thought this game might look like, finally coming to fruition in the fourth quarter. Yeah, both teams took away the other strengths early, so you saw Texas hitting threes and Iowa State driving for twos, but Texas continues to hit threes. What a performance from beyond the arc for Texas and to really complement what Charlie Collier is doing inside. When she has faced the double and triple teams inside, she has just shown her muscle, her perseverance, her strength, her skill, and has led Texas now with the five-point lead with 7-16 remaining. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball, and GEICO. You could save even more when bundling home and car insurance. Municipal Auditorium, three more games today, a couple tomorrow, Championship Sunday on ESPN2. We have not had a bad game to this point as there's a tie-up on the inbound. And Vic Schaefer drew up a little different defensive scheme out of that timeout. Iowa State had been setting a screen on Charlie Collier to inbound to their post player on previous plays and then dumping it back to the point guard. That time, two players went to defend. They didn't have that inlet, and then they threw it in to congestion, and Texas ties it up. Great coaching by Vic Schaefer to drop something a little different out of that timeout. Pressure from Bill Fenley as well. Joanne Allen Taylor from the corner, and it just rims out. It was halfway in. Texas by five. Ashley Jones with the ball in her hand sets up opportunities for Iowa State. Scott couldn't get that one. She'd hit a couple of three pointers previously. So many eyes on Charlie Collier. Scott battling her, three from the wing. No, and Tanarski able to wrap up the rebound. Tanarski get downhill. Tough shot fouled by Chevalier. Vic Schaefer, irate on the Texas sideline. Well, we mentioned that Kristen Scott hitting threes, trading for the twos of Collier's is a way that Iowa State can get back in this game, just creating a little bit of space there. The Texas defense was slow to rotate. Iowa State, Bill Finley went to Kristen Scott on that last play and, and got her another good look, just wasn't able to deliver on that. But if Iowa State can hit a three and Texas hits a two on the other end, Iowa State continues to chip back in this game. The lead is down to just three. Texas spacing, ball movement has been really good all game long. They tried to pick apart this zone. In the zone, there's been one behind and one in front of Collier. Most of the time, the, the one in front wasn't there that time, but good positioning by Kristen Scott. You saw the aggressive move by Charlie Collier that time got her in trouble. Scott has had a tough time defending, but as the ball is reversed, great post up, but Scott just stands her ground, and yeah, the shoulder and the elbow leading. Collier clears it out, she picks up the foul. Iowa State trying to deal with this Texas pressure. Ryan gets by Chevalier over the top of Collier. That She might have got a piece yeah, I think of that. She did. I think she did. got to take that shot quickly before Collier closes out or find your open player. 
into Collier, who gets on the ground, it's a turnover. That's where the double team came quickly. They couldn't even get the ball into Collier that time. That's what Iowa State needs to do. Oh, too easy for Jones. And finally, no help defender, and Jones has a straight line to the rim. One point game. Collier waiting for her chance to get some positioning. Here it is, Joanne Allen Taylor. No good, rebound Madison Wise. Iowa State's had some big defensive possessions the last few times down the court. Whether it's the steal or the defensive rebounding positioning. Texas trying to regroup and they do. Iowa State hasn't even gotten their offensive set. And there's 12 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes Ryan, spinning. Ryan, up and under, and she finishes. She had her eyes on the rim that whole time. She had Madison Wise out in the corner, but just the, the presence by that freshman to have the poise, the confidence to take that shot. Texas led by as many as eight in this quarter. It's a 14 to five run for Iowa State. Allen Taylor kicks it out, extra pass. Jones, was she in position? She was. And that's number four against Celeste Taylor. Iowa State's defense has cranked it up the last few possessions. Kristen Scott gets on the floor. The defense leads to offense. And look at this handoff. Sets up Ashley Jones for a straight line layup. And Iowa State not known for their aggressive defense, but often their clever defense. But they have been aggressive and getting in the lap of Collier and cutting off aggressive driving and picking up the fouls here lately. So Iowa State's defense coming through in the last two to three minutes to really help them gain this lead. And the foul was on the inbound. Kristen Scott just cutting. Contact was made by Collier, who has four now. So you're talking Celeste Taylor and Charlie Collier with four fouls and four minutes to play in a game that could very well see an overtime. Kristen Scott was on the bench quite a bit earlier in this game. Bill Fenley relied on Morgan Keene to bring the muscle against Collier, but Kristen Scott has come out to bring the finesse to counter the muscle of Collier to give Iowa State this lead right now. Allen Taylor. Texas looking for answers offensively. Got to go get the ball. You block out, you have to go retrieve the missed shot. Just can't get it into Collier right now. Lambert for three. Another one for Kyra Lambert. Five for ten from long range. She has 17. And the jacket coming off for Vic Schaefer. It's hard work on the sideline. The chess match. These two teams going at one another. It's been tough for Texas but they get yet another three-pointer. The nice drive by Chevalier sets it up, and we're all tied up with 332 get it to go. For a career-high seven assists, Kyra Lambert, a career-high five three-pointers, and you said it, Texas still tied. They haven't been as efficient inside as they have from the outside, but this team could shoot 36.5% from three down the stretch, and a little bit more efficient on the inside, they're going to be really tough to handle. And somehow Iowa State is doing it and finds themselves tied. You know, the 4-5 or five game is always the best game in this Big 12 championship, and it has not disappointed today. Inside Jones, blocking foul on Chevalier. Boy, Chevalier read the situation. She knew that she needed to hustle over there, but she couldn't get there quickly enough. The ball screen, Ashley Jones ch uh, turns the corner and Chevalier can't get outside that restricted arc quickly enough. Jones is so good at reading the situation and getting to the rim. Such a creative, dynamic scorer, one of the best in the country. I wish she had that free throw back, but leads the Big 12 in scoring. One of 
only two players in the nation that averages over 23 points and eight rebounds a game. And just such a threat. Iowa State in the bonus the rest of the way. On the other side, Cyclones haven't committed a foul yet. So Texas not even close to the free throw line. Why do you need it though? Lambert has six triples, 20 for her. And another foul on the inbound. And they, they're calling it on Charlie Collier. That's it. That's it for Collier. So the huge three-pointer for Texas to give them the lead. They pick up in full court. And Charlie Collier on Kristen Scott, but she runs over the screen set by Emily Ryan. That's a tough call for Collier, but you can't just run over the screen that is set. And they've been screening her all day in the backcourt, and she's been trying to get over that. I know she doesn't agree with it, and I hate to see Collier go out of the game and not be a part of this down the line, but she commits the foul there. Vic Schaefer was all over this officiating crew, and a couple members of his staff trying to hold him back and say, hey, we're still in this. We don't need a technical foul. It's two for Ryan at the line. So now how do you adjust your defense if you're Iowa State? Texas has hurt you with the three-point shot, and you don't have to defend Collier inside. Got to find Lambert and Allen Taylor on the perimeter and not give them those shots. They go into Ebo, and she's fouled. So even though Collier's out, her replacement, Lauren Ebo, the junior from Washington, D.C., will go to the line for two shots. She's played just five minutes in this game. Yeah, she played earlier with Collier to complement one another. And you see the coach is talking to her, Johnny Harris, about staying up on the sideline, staying in this game, being a mentor to Ebo. They're still depending on what happens with this game. If Texas wins, they go on in the tournament. If they don't win, they've got an NCAA tournament. There's still things to be learned and improved upon. A one-point lead for the Longhorns. Two and a half to play. And Collier being out on offense hurts, but defensively it hurts also because she's not that backstop. But Joanne Allen Taylor has done a terrific job against Ashley Jones today. She has made her work incredibly hard for all the points she has. Jones still with 18, but Allen Taylor has been so physical with Jones. Just pushing her down to the floor right now. Janarski on Ebo. Ebo is on Jones. They need to get the ball to Jones right now. Let her go to work. And here it is. They're all over Ashley Jones. Has to get something off, does, and the roll goes for Ashley Jones. She has 20. That's a highlight film for Ashley Jones. That personifies what Ashley Jones can do. She was pinballing off defenders that entire play and still has the presence and wherewithal to put the shot down. And now Texas has moved. No Collier. Chevalier, three to shoot, kicks it out, extra pass, steps in, Allen Taylor in Texas, right back at you. And she hits it as the shot clock winds down, just like Ashley Jones did on the other end. Big time plays for both these teams, how fun. Contact, blocking foul on Allen Taylor, trying to get around the screen, she is frustrated. That's her third. The last two possessions, both teams using the entirety of the shot clock. Ashley Jones with that clock running in her head, knew she had to get it up, went through about three defenders. Allen Taylor, even though she's been good from three-point range, chooses to dribble into that one. Now, just a small thing to keep an eye on here as Jones misses that free throw is Iowa State only has one foul, one team foul. If this comes down to a situation where they have to foul, they have some fouls to give. They can be extra aggressive right now and need to be. 
Jones hits one, tied at 67, eight ties, 15 lead changes, and I don't think we're done just yet. Well, Iowa State isn't a team that's going to pressure the basketball typically, but with those fouls to give, they can get out. Chevalier connects! Giving the cushion in that 2-3 zone. And Chevalier takes advantage of it. You got to get a hand up. That's too easy of a shot for Chevalier, who just dribbles in, gets around that screen on the top of the zone. Taylor gets it back to her, and the, the zone doesn't shift over. That's just too easy of a shot. Bill Fenley calls the timeout to get that fixed, but also to set up offense. I don't know if they indicated they ha were under a minute to play. So Iowa State can advance it to the front court. We'll see if they do, but you see the, the reset here and the fouls to give for Iowa State. Back and forth game so far. So many players stepping up. Chevalier the latest. Texas freshman trying to help this team without Charlie Collier who fouled out just a few minutes ago. Ebo stays on. Chevalier, freshman from Chatsworth, California. She just played four minutes on Sunday against TCU and didn't score. She has stuffed the stat sheet today. Here's Jones looking for help to Donarski. That time, no need to force, be patient. Into Wise, too strong. They get a call on Ebo holding Jones. And that is huge because that was a turnover, if not. Iowa State really was kind of bunched up there. Yeah, they didn't have anywhere to go, but I think it was actually Alan Taylor You're right. that hooked the arm of Jones. She can't believe it, but she hooked Jones' arm to not allow her to release and go get that lob pass. That's four on Allen Taylor. Celeste Taylor has four. Collier's already fouled out. Ashley Jones needs one more free throw to tie this up. She's seven of 10 from the stripe, and we're tied with 46 to go. Again, those three fouls to give for Iowa State. They can be aggressive. Not be worried about sending Texas to the free throw line. Debo fighting with Scott. Corner three, Lambert, and couldn't get that to go. Celeste Taylor on the rebound, misses the putback. It's another offensive rebound, and a loose ball will belong to Texas. Oh, boy. The scramble, the extra effort. Taylor misses the shot, the dive on the floor. And the tie-up goes to Texas. And this is where, how much does Bill Fenley now use these fouls to give? Because you don't want Texas to just patiently and calmly be able to take a game-winning shot attempt. You don't want to foul on the shot, obviously, but you want to put pressure at least enough to disrupt what Texas wants to do with their offense. On the other hand, we've seen Vic Schaefer's squad move the basketball against this zone, use the dribble drive into a jumper. They want to use this entire clock. They want to have the last shot of the game and not give Iowa State a chance for last second heroics here. Texas wants this last attempt for the win or to go to overtime. The Longhorns with 12 threes today. They've shot 37% from there. Let's see what's coming up later today as well in our Phillips 66 Big 12 Women's Championship bracket. Up next, it's Baylor TCU. We stay on ESPNU. Then we have a break before the night game start at 6.30 Eastern, starting with West Virginia K-State, and then Bedlam to close out day number two. The winner of this will await the winner of our next game, Baylor and TCU. Championship on Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN2. Selection Monday right around the corner. It is a busy week of basketball. This feels like a game that should be played in March. Yeah, no doubt. How much fun. Both these teams laying it all out on the line. 
And here we go. The Texas Longhorns, the only team to have beaten Iowa State twice this season. A chance to do it in the Big 12 tournament. Yep, that's smart. That's what Iowa State needs to do. Right on the right on the move off the screen. There was no chance at a shot attempt there. They have those fouls to give. That's how you use that strategy. See what Vic Schaefer's team has to offer here with just under six seconds to play. Into Evo. Joanne Allen Taylor into the lane, throws it up, and no good. Evo fighting for it. Overtime in Kansas City. Stay with us. A quick break. Overtime on the other side. No Charlie Collier for Texas. Can the Longhorns find a way against the Cyclones? The first overtime game in the Big 12 Championship since March 7th of 2014. It's Texas and Iowa State. Tied at 69 as we go to overtime, and what a finish it was. Yeah, Iowa State used one of their fouls to give, and looks like they tried to again. Look, they reach in. I mean, they're trying to commit a foul here. They know they have a foul to give, but somehow Alan Taylor holds on through it, almost makes the shot. And then Iowa State just trying to hack away. Kristen Scott was smart not to save it in. Iowa State played that right defensively. Alan Taylor almost hit the game winner, but now we've got five more minutes and Texas going to have to do it without Charlie Collier on the court. Chevalier, Alan Taylor, Lambert have all stepped up for Texas. They still have to deal with the All-American Ashley Jones though out there for the Cyclones and Texas not just Collier, Celeste Taylor, Alan Taylor, both with four. Certainly some foul concerns out there early in this overtime period. And Iowa State has got to extend that zone defense. There's just Lambert and Alan Taylor have been so good from three today. Chevalier knocks it down from the corner. Her first three of the game. What a game she's had. She has been disruptive defensively. She's hit some big shots. Nine points for Chevalier. A season high, 13 three-pointers for Texas. Jones cut off. It's Ryan on a cut. Nice take and a layup. And that's just great presence by Emily Ryan. A terrific pass, first of all, by Ashley Jones, but Ryan to be able to, to absorb some contact and then just not just be in a rush when she actually hits the shot. Chevalier, back-to-back -back bucket. She has five for Texas in the overtime. How about that? We have seen some big plays by so many different players. And a five-second count. Finally, Texas gets the five-second count on this end of the court. Chevalier. Here outside the arc, the cushion given. She dribbles into one like she did late in the game. She's limping a little bit too. She came to get it, now has it at the logo, but she's playing with a lot of confidence and confidence, what a great thing it is in basketball especially. You know, I don't think we have mentioned Audrey Warren for Texas has not played in this game. She hasn't played in any of the games against Iowa State this year. She had a fantastic game at the end of the regular season for Texas, but has not been available today. Jones guarded by Allen Taylor. Chevalier helping, finds Ryan open for a three. Emily Ryan misses and gets her own rebound. Jones looking for space. And a reverse layup, <laughs> Ashley Jones does it again. Finds a wide way to get by two defenders. Again, dynamic, creative, so good at finding her way through the creases of the defense to score. Joanne Allen Taylor from the free throw line. She uses the ball screen well. Charlie Collier out with the five fouls, but her guards 
have really come through in big ways while she was in and while she's been out. Chevalier rips it away from Jones in Texas with under, with just over two to play as a three point lead. Texas with seven points already in the overtime period. Joanne Allen Taylor, no. Wise rebounds. It almost looked like she gave it to Celeste Taylor for a second. <laughs> Donarski comes over to get it from Ashley Jones. Donarski bringing her defender, just needed to get out of the way. Skips it across. Dangerous pass. Extra one to Wise for the tie. No good. Evo, nice job rebounding. Found the open player. Wise just sort of moving a little to the side as she shot that. And Iowa State find a little late magic in Kansas City. Texas, the overtime period without their superstar, Charlie Collier, in a three point lead. Ebo to Lambert, driving over Kane. No on the roll, and Wise fighting for it. It falls to Emily Ryan. Ryan driving, has Ebo on her, and a timeout from Bill Finley. He's got three timeouts. He got an extra one here in the overtime period. Just wants to talk and make sure they're all on the same page. It'll be on Iowa State basketball after this timeout on the floor. Iowa State still has two fouls to give. Here's how we got to this point at the end of regulation. Iowa State was continuing to take the ball at the basket. Ashley Jones with her heroics able to get the ball in and then Joanne Allen Taylor who's had such a great game for Texas was not able to score. Even though Iowa State was trying to foul her on the drive, she still cradled it and had a great look at a shot but couldn't finish it. Puts us into overtime but Texas has been good. Chevalier has hit key shots here in the overtime. The guards have come through, even with Charlie Collier fouled out. Ashley Do Jones has done what she has done uh, all season long, creating shots. Who will make the big shots? Who will have the opportunity here down the stretch to advance in this game? number on that chart right there and a career high for Lambert but Texas hitting a season best 13 three pointers 38 percent from long range and you're right not only did Joanne out did they tried to foul they probably did foul her both of them but I think Texas almost would rather the no call there because she got such a good look and they weren't going to go to the free throw line anyway you were going to have about two seconds to find something on an inbound they find themselves up by three in overtime without Charlie Collier. What a performance from this supporting cast, which we've made a big emphasis on throughout this tournament. There's so many superstars. Which one of these casts can play the best? Our third game of the weekend, just our first game of four today. Hopefully there's coffee downstairs for us waiting. <laughs> what, a, what a way to start a, a four-game day with an overtime, but... A terrific game. You see Charlie Collier. She would love another opportunity to play Baylor if Baylor happens to advance to the semifinals. But relying on her team right now, Ashley Jones, some, some work to do here for Iowa State as a lot of time spent there for Iowa State to determine how they're going to attack. Vic Schaefer has brought his aggressive defense, the, the double teams to try to stop Ashley Jones, try to get the ball out of her hands. Kristen Scott not on the floor right now. She didn't play a lot early on. She came on, gave that offensive spark, really battled with Collier, hit some big shots. And she's had to have limited time for some injuries this year, but boy, she had some big shots in the fourth quarter to get Iowa State back in this game. Cyclones have struggled to inbound it, and again struggling, lobs it in. Donarski chases it down, working on Ebo. And tied up by Chevalier. It stays at this end, but Iowa State 
on the inbounds have really struggled. Well, it's the pressure to Texas. They make it so difficult for you to inbound, even with all the creativity and the screening. A lot of switching of screens for Texas. It's been very difficult for Iowa State just to get it in. Jones leans in, offensive foul called. Joanne Allen Taylor, she's been working hard all day long. You can see the emotion. Allen Taylor has picked up a few fouls on these, but this time jumps into the space and the lean by Jones. She commits the offensive foul this time. You can see the just the elation from Allen Taylor after having such a tough job all day long to try to defend Ashley Jones. Quick timeout for Vic Schaefer. He saw Celeste Taylor in some serious trouble trapped in the corner there. So Texas with a three-point lead in the ball with just under 44 seconds to play. How are you playing this if you're Iowa State? Well, they, they jumped up and they brought the full court pressure. Vic Schaefer didn't call a timeout to advance to the front court before he inbounded, so Texas will still have to inbound it in the back court. And again, Iowa State with still one more foul to give in this situation. They can be over aggressive. They can try to rip the ball out of a Texas player's hands. If they get the foul, they're not sending to the Texas to the line. So that's what they need to do. They need the possession back. And if they don't, it, it, once they get that foul, they don't have time to mess around. They're going to have to commit the foul to send Texas to the free throw line. What a game we've had. Two teams that are going to the NCAA tournament. It's just about momentum and an opportunity to compete for a trophy here in Kansas City and clearly means something to these two programs and these two coaches. Can Texas get it in? Oh boy, that's a risky pass over, up and over the top. Trying to trap Chevalier, and she just speeds by everyone, is finally fouled at the other end of the court. <laughs> Three Iowa State defenders tried to foul her, and she just outran them up the sideline. But now, no more fouls to give for Iowa State, so now it's the strategy of who do you send to the free throw line. You can play, you have some time to play some defense here. Into Ebo, and they foul. She's a 66% free throw shooter. Hasn't taken a ton this year. Got a lot of pressure on this transfer from Penn State. The junior as she has replaced Charlie Collier who fouled out in the fourth quarter. This is the first. To give Iowa State a chance to tie this game potentially if she misses this one. Hits the second, that's a big shot for the junior. She has played some big minutes. Only two <laughs> points, both coming from the free throw line, but just the, her presence in the minutes that she's played in overtime and at the end of the fourth quarter, really impressive. And I love that. Did you see Vic Schaefer? He pulled down his mask enough to smile at Ebo. He wanted to make sure he smiled at her. That's a big free throw to give this team a two possession advantage. He put the mask right back on, but he smiled to let her know what a big shot that was. So now if you're Bill Finley, Iowa State, the hardest part has been getting the ball in bounds. A quick score here, either the drive to the basket by any Donarski, Emily Ryan, Ashley Jones, the priority, but also if the double team comes on the drive, the kick out to a three-point shooter is not out of, out of the toolbox. That's a possibility here. There's Ryan, steps back, looking for options. Fuhrbach over the top of Evo. Oh, Fuhrbach hits it, and Iowa State is right back. Texas decides not to call the last time out. They're going to inbound it in the backcourt. They foul mm. Celeste Taylor quickly, so Taylor will go to the line in the bonus. Kylie Fuhrbach, known as the slasher and driver in this freshman class, a 25% three-point shooter. 
understands that when you're an Iowa State Cyclone, you have to be ready to pull the trigger. What a big three for the freshman. That's her first bucket of the game as Celeste Taylor goes to the line and hits the first. Regardless, we'll have a one possession game. Celeste Taylor, eight points, six rebounds, four assists, and just two turnovers, which has been an issue for her lately. And she hits both free throws to make it a three-point game. And Iowa State, I believe that's their last timeout. Still says one on the board. So a quick word timeout. from Bill Fenley. That is yep. their final timeout. And so he calls the timeout so they can advance up the court. And, and draw up the play. Now, you can go for the quick two and the foul, or you can go for using as much of this clock as possible and a three in time, enough time that if you miss, you get an offensive rebound and another chance. I think Bill Finley's going to want to score quickly, at least attempt quickly, so that they know what the situation is, but it, they've got options here. But what, what a big shot by Fierbach to even put them in this situation. Texas going to continue to bring the pressure. Vic Schaefer didn't use the timeout the last time in the backcourt, but he has that timeout. So if Iowa State should happen to hit a three, they have the timeout so they can advance to the other end and still have time for a score. So a lot being discussed. This possession, first of all, as Iowa State tries to tie it up or at least score to prolong this game. Clearly a game that's really important to these two teams. I would have to imagine both coaches would have rather done this in regulation, just given the time of the season, the potential to play two more games this weekend before the NCAA right. tournament. I mean, there's six players on the court, three for each side, who have played 40-plus minutes in this game. Well, that's tough in a tournament setting. Whoever wins this game is going to have to turn around quickly for tomorrow's noon game after playing a hard-fought battle. But a lot of work to be done here for Iowa State. 28 seconds. Trying to get it in. It's a turnover, and just no one really coming to the ball for the Cyclones. They'll have to foul Lambert. So she gets two free throws, and Brenda... The pressure is big, but we've also seen Iowa State standing around a little bit on those inbounds. Yeah, Emily Ryan was in the backcourt. I think Donarski thought she was going to break to the basketball. She looked like she was turning and expecting Ryan to come to it, and she didn't. And a turnover, critical turnover. Iowa State doesn't even get a chance to shoot the ball. Lambert makes it a four-point game. There's still plenty of time, but Iowa State has to be so quick right now in scoring. Iowa State, four turnovers in overtime. The pressure of Texas just getting to them. Ryan kicks to Jones for three. Got to have it. They got it. Ashley Jones cuts it to two. The three-point threat is always an option for Texas. And a foul called, Celeste Taylor back to the free throw line, can make this a two possession game again. Well, after the turnover on the previous play, the dribble drive, the kick out to Ashley Jones, who else buries the three pointer? And then she tries to get the steal on Celeste Taylor before committing the foul, but even if she makes this, a three pointer can still tie it. Three-point game, Excuse Celeste me, she, Taylor. Yeah, she has the two to, to have the option to extend it to four. Excuse me. And there it is, four-point game. Pressure falls back to the Cyclones. Inbound quickly. They have got to go. 12 seconds. Jones needs to get a shot off. Eight seconds. A lot of time ticking off. Ryan for three. Good with four and a half. This is unreal shot making right now. And a timeout for Vic Schaefer. Wow. Just incredible. Just incredible. The dribble drive by Jones. Time is getting away. Chevalier tries to steal, leaves. 
the shot open by Emily Ryan in the corner. And Iowa State continues to come through on the big shots, giving themselves a chance. Unbelievable game. Who thought we could top the first two we saw last <laughs> night, and yet this one has lived up to it and then some. Texas has done a nice job down the stretch here, hitting their free throws. But regardless of what happens after Iowa State fouls, Texas cannot make this a two possession game. And it's all happened in this overtime without Charlie Collier. What a performance by the Texas supporting cast. Yeah, the Texas guards have been phenomenal on both ends of the court. Iowa State has made incredible three pointers to get themselves, give themselves a chance. Ashley Jones playing center field on this inbound. Into Lambert, and some seconds ticking off as she's chased down by Fuhrbach. So 2.4 on the clock, some time left. It'll be Lambert going to the line for two, who's had a career day, 22 points, seven rebounds, six assists. She has come up huge with those six three-pointers. Having the presence to get the ball inbounds to have this opportunity. Uh, Iowa State, in every practice they run, they have a three-second play. So it will be implemented here. Missed. Two seconds. Jones got to get it off, and she's not going to. Texas holds on. They advance. Vic Schaefer. Elation. What a remarkable victory for Texas. After Charlie Collier fouls out, the guards for Texas. Lauren Ebo hitting a critical free throw. Eight for 10 Texas was from the free throw line in overtime. Five different players scoring to somehow secure this victory. And you can see Vic Schaefer talking to his team about the heart and the passion and the determination that they showed and they found to win this.